What's up, guys? Alan here, just uh, going over the sine and cosine graphs once again, but going to take a look at translating them, shifting them around, up, down, left, right, select, start. Some of you gamers might know what I mean. So we're going to just uh, kind of review the sine and cosine curve in general uh, without any of the amplitude or period quarter change, and then we'll get into adding on these other two parts in addition to those. And then finally, after this section, we'll move on to the other four trig functions now that we'll have a better grasp of those different attributes that can happen to our most basic trig functions, which are sine and cosine. So we're just gonna build upon the last section, which was simply dealing with sine and cosine in general, and then going from there to talk about their amplitude and periods. Okay, that we then cut into those four quarters of our unit circle and we're able to hopefully get the hang of how quickly we can graph these based off of that unit circle. So I'm going to do a quick drawing here of a unit circle so that we can all see it and make sure that we realize why these are what they are. So now you can see I have my unit circle there and we want to evaluate. We'll start with the sine function first and then we'll get to the cosine function. I'll review the amplitude period and quarters, but let's start with our sine function and plugging in for our x-axis, which means we're talking about the x value first. So for this, we're gonna plug in zero to start, and if I was to evaluate a angle of zero here, then what would that look like when I plug in zero? what would I get out when I evaluate sine, All right? So for this, we know the sine of zero. Well, the sine of any angle is y over r. And since I know we're on the unit circle and we have our y value, and therefore we know our r value is equal to one, then we can say that this would be a zero over one. And therefore we can go ahead and plot this point right here. So that's why sine starts at zero. Then when we go to the next quadrantal angle from there, we would go up to this one, which would be a y of one and an r of one. And therefore we would then have at pi over two, or 90 degrees, a y value or output of one. Then we go back to the y value. Now remember we said, Sine is always the y over the r for any angle, but because the, on the unit circle here, we can just focus on the y value. So notice it started at zero. Then my y value went to one, which was a high point on this, and then it goes back to zero. So that would be my next point that I would plot at that pi or 180 degrees, and then our y value at three pi over twos, one, two, three, would be at negative one. And so it would be my next point at three pi over twos, and then going all the way around 360 degrees or two pi, we would get back from zero to one to zero to negative one, back to zero. And of course, everything in between, which everything in between would also mean we could do and evaluate the reference angles of 30, 45, and 60 in all four of our quadrants, which remember we also said we're going to be positive and negative in certain places. And so the positive values are obviously in quadrant one to quadrant two, and then negative values for sine were in quadrant three and four. And that's how we get our sine curve with, again, an amplitude of one. That's our high and our low. And then our period before this would repeat again of two pi. Because if we went around our circle again, we get the same y values of zero, one, zero, negative one, and then back to zero again. Okay, so again, why we cut it into quarters, is because that's what the x and y axis do. We have our four quadrants, or four quarters. 
All right, so cosine a little bit quicker now. Uh, we would also have those same types of values, but this time we're going to be dealing with cosine, which remember is always for any angle, the x over r. And because we're on the unit circle, again, our r would become 1, and therefore we're just focusing on, this time, the x values. Starting at 0 degrees, going every 90 to get all the way around one full circle. So for this one, we're dealing with the x values. And because we're dealing with the x values, now we're going to focus on the x. Starting at a 0 degree or radian, a y value or output of 1. Then at 90, what would my x value become? Well, this time it would be a 0. So now we go from 1 to 0, down to negative 1. Then my x value goes back to 0, then all the way around back to the 1 that we started at. And as you can see, if we repeated this pattern, continually going around that circle, the same values. Okay, So you can see the subtle difference between sine and cosine. The amplitudes being 1 from our x-axis going a distance of 1, both up and down from either of these, and then also our period, our length of time that it takes to repeat is 2 pi. So now we're going to look into what happens if instead of multiplying by some number, either to the x or the y value, which changes our x-axis, or period of time that it takes, or the y-axis, the amplitude we called it, what would happen if we added or subtracted to our function? And again, to both the x and the y. So since the a was the amplitude, and the b is what we used to find our period, the next letters in the alphabet would be c and d. So we're going to use those for the horizontal and vertical shift. And which one do you think would be a little bit easier to work with? Hopefully you said the vertical, which is why, remember these are equivalent, y is equal to f of x. So if we add or subtract some number to c, we're going to call it to our y value, our function, then that is going to affect our y value. If it's being done to x, which is our angle of our function, then remember for x's, we did the opposite, and that would affect our angle. Okay, so I'm going to give you a little moniker to hopefully remember and help you guys recall what to do when, because now we're adding two more things on top of the other two that we already talked about. And you can even argue three, because remember when we threw a negative in front with the amplitude, that also had a reflection that it did about our x axis. Okay, so we're going to look at these a little bit more depth, but I wanted to just lay it out here. What's being done to what? Well, this is my y value, so this is being done to the y. Here's my x value, so this is obviously being done to the x. And notice the difference in the signs, the symbols there. We have the plus sign for the y and the negative sign for the x. Because remember, x's are x's for a reason. They wanted the opposite of us. So a few more pieces of notes. We'll wrap this up and then start applying it. So like we said, when there's adding or subtracting being done to the x, then that's going to obviously affect the x-axis, which is why we no longer use theta as much anymore. Okay. So we're going to call this a horizontal shift, or even what we call a phase shift. Okay, you'll hear both of those, so make sure you know they are synonymous with one another. right? But remember that negative sign was there to represent the x's. Remember, they are x's for a reason. They wanted the opposite of us. So that's my little joke to hopefully help with all the x value numbers that are being done to our angle, we will have the opposite effect for both our period and now our phase or horizontal shifts.
So how can we memorize this for our whys? Well, remember, if it's not being done to our x, then it's obviously going to affect our y values, and therefore the y-axis. And so we will call this a vertical shift for that reason. And remember, whys are whys. So we will listen to exactly what they're telling us to do. All right, so that's my little way of hopefully helping you to remember when something is being done to the x, whether it's being multiplied and therefore going to affect our period and quarters, then we will do the opposite and divide. If it's being added, then we will do the opposite and subtract by doing a horizontal or phase shift along our x-axis. And what do you think we're going to shift? Hopefully you said all, the entire graph. We will literally just pick up and shift left or right. So for that reason, this shouldn't be too difficult, but remember the x-axis is usually a lot uglier than the y-axis meaning we got the zeros, pi over two, pi, three pi over two, and two pi. And if we shift it a pi over two, that would at least be nice because then it would be shifting along those axes. But if we were to shift a pi over four, 45 degrees, or pi over three, 60 degrees, now we don't have those tick marks necessarily, so it's gonna be a little bit more challenging. So that's why they put the C first, because this is the order that you should be doing these in. A, B, C, and D. Amplitude, period, vertical shift, and then that phase or horizontal shift. So you can see the two main things are sine and cosine. You're gonna to have to know which function they're giving you and then what their parent graph looks like. And I say parent graph because that's what we're gonna start with. All of these possibilities, the A's, B's, C's, and D's, that they could multiply, add, subtract to, those are the things that can change that parent graph. Shift it, stretch it, reflect it, all those things that we've been talking about. So we're gonna start always with the A, the amplitude. Then we'll get the period taken care of, which we talked about is always gonna be two pi for sine and cosine, all right? Then we'll take and do some vertical shifting with C. Notice it's not being done to the X, so in turn it's going to affect the Y value. And then lastly, we will deal with the horizontal or phase shift, which as you notice is being done to the X. And remember X's, we're always gonna do the opposite. And that's the symbol we use for opposite. Okay? So there's two different methods that they're giving us here to kind of accomplish this. Method one has, as you can see, quite a few, five steps, and then method two only has two, okay? So if you wanna grab a photo of this or a screenshot, feel free, it's also in our book. Otherwise, let's start with a few easy examples and then progressively get more involved. All right, so here's our third example, asking us to do just one period Sometimes I'll ask you to do two periods, so you can go left and right, or do two consecutive to the right. Uh, but in this case, they're telling us just to do it by translating our parent graph, which means we need to know what we're dealing with first, a sine or a cosine, and that should be pretty obvious to find. Okay, now you can see three different things other than just the cosine of x. And those three things, hopefully you can see, are the A, the B, and a D. We do not have a vertical shift because there's no adding or subtracting other than to the X, All right? So of those three things, what order should we do them in? Remember the A, the amplitude would be first. And we can see we have a stretching of one and a half times of what we normally would have. The second would be the B, and that B remember is a two. That's what's being done to the X, right? So our period, which is normally two pi, we will take that and divide it by our B, which is two. So our new period is going to be pi for this one, 
which means our quarters are going to go by pi over 4. But this is where a lot of you would have gotten goofed up if you tried it on your own first. What's being done to the x? Well, technically, you don't know yet. You can't tell me that because what they gave us was y equals 3 halves cosine of, notice it's a 2x. So I don't even like that you gave me this yet. What I want you all to do is tell me what's being done to the x by getting the x by itself. If there's more than one thing being done to it, then please get the x by itself. And how would we do that? Well, remember, this is an equation. We can do whatever we want, but we don't want to touch the y. We need it to be the y equals so that we can figure out how much up or down we're going in the y direction. So what we're going to have to do is undo the multiplying by 2 by, of course, dividing by 2. But you know you can't just divide by 2 to the parts on the inside with the x. So we're going to have to multiply by 2 to undo it. This is actually called factoring. A lot of people don't realize that it's just undoing what we're doing. And since we can't divide to whatever and only the parts that we want, we undo it by multiplying by that 2 on the outside. So when we do the dividing by 2, then those will cancel out and we'll get the x all by itself as we wanted. But notice what changed over here is when we divide the pi by 2, we still get pi over 2. And so this is what you actually had to have done first in order to even start this problem. You had to get that x by itself. Because a lot of people would have said, you know what, at the beginning of this, there was a shift of, hopefully you said positive, or to the right, pi. But in reality, that was what was being done to 2x, not x. So you had to divide that out so that you get the proper vertical, or excuse me, to get the proper horizontal or phase shift of right or positive pi over 2. And as I mentioned, I would always do that last because it requires the most work, typically. Okay, so let's go ahead and start by graphing the, which they said, cosine first with our normal tick marks of pi over 2, pi, 3 pi over 2 to get all the way around. And then we know that the amplitude would have changed. That would have been our first thing that we should shift or stretch in this case to one and a half or three halves. And remember, because it's cosine, we're going to start at 1, go to 0, negative 1, 0, and 1. The only thing that changed is instead of 1s, we're at 1 and a half. And there's the first part. So whether you do it up here to the side all by itself, that's fine. Or you can just do it on the graph with dashed lines so that you don't have to keep redrawing graphs. Next, what also would have changed? was the period, the length of time that it would take in order to repeat itself. And we can see that that was pi, and therefore we cut it into quarters, which cut it into fourths would be that. So we're going to start by taking this, and we're going to draw it out by changing all of these to be pi over fours. So that's just going to change every single one of these, which I'll just line out to be 1 pi over 4, 2 pi over 4s, which would change it to pi over 2, 3 pi over 4s, and then 4 pi over 4s, which would end at pi, just like we said it should. Okay, so that's going to be my original change to the new period in quarters and then I can redraw it, which I already have everything set up. So I just redraw. It. There's step two. And then our third and final step for this one would be to actually shift horizontally this time 
everything to the right. Remember, it's always the opposite for x's, pi over 2. So that is going to change now. Notice we have something different. Our 0, instead of pi over 2, remember they went by pi over 4s. So all of these values now, which are my five key points, I would then have to change by shifting a right pi over 2, which means I am tasked with, once again, trying to find what all five of those values are, take those, put the shift on, plot my points with my amplitude and new period and quarters all together to get my final graph. So doing that, I get, and now I have my five key points that I could go ahead and start plotting. Now remember, since we're shifting right to pi over two, that could actually be used from my original if I wanted to keep all of those as is and just shift them right pi over two. But remember, we're gonna have these as our five key values. So we might as well just make our own new grid. Okay, so normally we would have started at zero. Remember, we're shifting right pi over two. So our first one is pi over two. Okay, I'm not gonna start at zero because that is my y-axis. That's there for reference, okay? And then the next one I'll just put as three pi over four, pi, five pi over four. And then I'm gonna go ahead and extend this out to get my last, which would have been three pi over two. And now that I have those, just remember I'm not actually starting at zero. That already changed and shifted to pi over two as my first of five key points. Now don't forget we did those two other fixes as well. We changed it to three halves as our amplitude. And then we also had the period change, which already came into effect here for our quarters. So all we got to do is make sure that we graph our cosine curve correctly, which remember started always at that one, which in this case is one and a half. Then it went to zero, negative one and a half, zero, one and a half back to my original starting point. Okay, that is our final answer with everything labeled appropriately. Again, not necessarily drawn to scale, but I don't mind as long as you can get all of those values. You're on your own. Come see me or our tutor to try to get any extra help, and we'll go from there.